Alright, what's going on guys? So I saw a video by Zero Two Game Dev setting up combat using a chooser table. I thought it was really cool, very interesting, and I wanted to share it. So here's the video here, motion matching combat system in 5.5. He sets up the chooser table, he sets up a line trace to do damage, multiple weapons. He does a lot in this video. Highly recommend just going to watch this video. The only thing with this video that I don't, you know, it's a bit iffy, is the title motion matching combat system. Technically, this isn't motion matching. We're just using a chooser to set up the animations and feeding it some information too if you wanted to do motion matching we would use a pulse search database for the animations and then we'll use a chooser just to give that pulse search database an easier time to pick what animations to play basically but regardless i still think this is a very good video all right so we've created a new project using game animation sample and by the way you could just use the third person template if you wanted to you just have to enable the chooser plugin and we have some animations here you can just use whatever animations you have it does not matter this isn't about how cool your animations look is just setting up to choose the table for combat so what we're going to do is right click in our content folder and create a new folder and i'll call this combat system and then open this up right click in here we're going to create a blueprint class and an actor component we'll call this bpcs for blueprint component combat system and then i'm going to right click in here again and we're going to search for chooser and under miscellaneous we're going to create a chooser table for the chooser type is going to be generic the object type is going to be object type the result class is going to be anim montage and then for the parameters we can create a new parameter here this is going to be a class parameter the class is going to be the combat system that we just created and it's going to be an input we can click on create and we can name the cht attacks we can open up the combat system and let's open up the attacks as well and in combat system you can right click and let's just say left mouse button so obviously if we wanted to we could just create a key as well we can just uh duplicate one of these name it attack and then open up the sandbox character add a mapping in here for attack and tell it the, the left mouse and then we could also just search for attack here and use this instead anyway in here our started we're going to search for chooser evaluate the chooser the chooser that we're going to evaluate is our attacks and for the input here is going to be self and for the results we're going to play montage connect that into there and then we're going to get owner we're going to get component by a class the actor component is going to be the skeletal mesh component the return value goes into skeletal mesh now in his video he tells you to untick should stop all montages but this actually causes some issues for me at least so i'm just going to leave that on okay next in here we're going to create some values in here the first one is going to be can attack as a boolean we're going to create another one for is attacking we're also going to create combo count and this is going to be a float okay so for can attack just click on compile so you can see the default value this is going to be on true by default and everything else can be left as it is you can drag this in get it and search for branch connect this up and then we can grab the can attack again set it and it's going to be left on false and then is attacking it's going to be on true and place that into there so now i also want to create a way to add combos and reset the combo too so what we're going to do is create a function i'll name this add combo we're going to grab the combo count we're going to search for plus plus and going to connect that into there and then we're going to grab the can attack this is going to be set to true and is attacking to false and then we're going to create another function in here for reset combo and we're going to grab the combo again and just do the exact same checks so the combo is going to be set to zero obviously uh can attack is going to be on true and is attacking is going to be on false so we're basically done with all of the code. What we're going to do now is in our chooser table, add a column in here. This is going to be a float range. The float range is going to be the combo count. And we're going to add an asset in here, another one, and another, another. one. I'm going to add three because I have three animations. And the way this is set up, the combo count is the first one is going to be set on zero. Then the second animation is going to be set to 0 0.9 and 1.1. And then the third animation is going to be 1.9 and 2.1. So 
basically zero one and two and then for the animations that we're gonna use here we have the animations here we're gonna go into our animations retarget animations to the uefn and i have these three animations here that i'm gonna use export i'll make a new folder i'll make a new folder in here and i'll export them now i'm gonna right click on all of these animations all three of them highlighted but i'm gonna go to asset action edit section in property matrix and enable root motion and force root lock then we're going to right click on these and create and a montage and now with these animations we can just assign them into our choose a table like this so pick them one by one and assign them and now all we need to do is we do need to create some notifiers for the add combo and reset combo but first let's just open up our character and make sure this is working at least let's add that combat system component into our character and if we press play yeah there we go that is working so that's cool what we can do now is back in our combat system right click blueprint class all classes anim notify and we're going to create an anim notify in here this is going to be a n add combo open this up in functions override we're going to receive notify out of mesh component get owner and get components by class this is going to be our combat component and then we can just add combo connect it up like this click on return value save and now we can just duplicate this call this reset combo open this up and delete add combo and add reset combo instead Okay, and now we can go back into our animations here. Go to the first one and we can just add the add combo in here. So as soon as he's done about here, I want to add the combo. And then once he's about here, we want to reset the combo. So what's happening here is basically once this animation goes to about here, then we can play the next animation. But if we don't press an input, then it just resets the combo. So I'm going to just copy these. I'm going to go to the next one here. Paste about here about that that's fine and the third one we don't need to add a combo for here because it is the last animation so reset the combo about there it's fine if we press play now nice perfect okay so yeah that's pretty much it i'm just gonna quickly add a sword to our character just we don't really need to do this but i'll just add it just so it looks a little bit better so in our character i'm just gonna add a stack mesh name it sword put this into our character and we already have a sword in here and we're gonna go into our character I'm gonna find the right hand add a socket in the sword and then we'll add a preview for the sword and then all we need to do in here is just turn this around put this down a little bit perfect and then go to the sword just reset the location for the parent the parent socket will be the sword and then with all of that that's pretty much it so yeah big thanks to zero two game dev for this because i think this is pretty cool you can obviously do a lot more with this too so for example if we go back into our combat system here if we wanted to we could add like a damage variable here and then set up a damage uh, a way to do damage so like apply damage for example right apply damage you would use like a line trace or something like that and then you can grab this damage variable put it into the base damage and then if we go into our chooser table then we can add a output float here uh we need to actually compile and in here we'll add our damage and then we can do things like you know for the first uh, um animation our first attack five five and then the last attack do ten so there's a lot of things that you can do here i think this is a very cool way to set up combat just because the chooser table is actually pretty powerful in my opinion hopefully you like the video definitely go watch his video because his video is very great he does explain a lot in his video too and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one